I'm Koza Man. Now I know you're all here for Mid Journey. So maybe some of you don't follow this channel. So before beginning this amazing guide to advanced compositions with Mid Journey, let me tell you a little bit about myself and my work. Okay, so let's go. I'm a surreal artist and a paleo artist of some repute. I like drawing uh, dinosaur reconstructions, but I also like designing creatures. Uh, what if evolution progressed along different lines? These, for example, are giant spiders, which may have evolved in a low gravity ecosystem. I also like illustrating fanciful creatures of all sorts, shapes, sizes and colors. I also do purely surreal art based on uh, creature-like things and uh, landscapes and just beautiful colors and shapes really. I, them, I do such art in digital format as well as in regular paint and canvas type executions. Okay, this is going to be useful because this is going to be more of a tutorial about how to paint digitally rather than how to use Mid Journey to do crazy things. But okay, before going, you can see more of my works on cmkozaman.com and also you can visit patreon.cmkozaman and just give me a little donation, you know? Every penny helps. If you like this tutorial, please consider going back to patreon.com cmkozaman and, you know, donating any amount that you can. Even a dollar a day really makes a difference for me. Okay, let's go. Ew, 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 ew. Composition and collaging in Mid Journey. Advanced tutorial. I, I typed this in like some, you know, badass Akira or uh, alien kind of script so it looks more, you know, knowledgeable and self assured. But, you know, if you haven't been paying attention, Mid Journey is this amazing program. At the time of recording, which is July the 1st, 2022, it was accessible mostly through uh, the Discord app, which you can see here. Just click on Discord, okay? And what, how it works is basically you go onto this app, you either message the mid-journey or go into one of the chat rooms, and you type anything like an abstract field of tulips, and then the program magically generates those images for you. And then after you get these images, you got a choice of either upgrading them so if you press u1 this one gets upgraded and it becomes extremely realistic quote unquote or if you choose like the if you choose the v option which is like v2 makes varieties of this painting so it, you get more red things but slightly different maybe and using those simple uh, tools and pathways you can generate a amazingly lifelike fantastic artwork really quickly no, I don't. Do, I don't want that now. Okay, sorry. And many people have been using this to generate these, you know, cyborg faces or AI faces or whatever. Now, one of the great advantages of Mid Journey is you can also instruct it to create something in the style of something. So this is not my work; it's by somebody else. But I think they said like cyberpunk McDonald's party in the style of uh, Goya or something, and this came out. Now, obviously, if you zoom closer to these, all these figures are weird and kind of humanoid, but not quite. And there's a lot of trash in the background. And not to say, like, perhaps in, in this particular case, the quote-unquote trash adds a lot to the scene, makes it seem more painterly and lifelike. Certainly, if say, a, a human being painted this with oil paint on a canvas, he or she would be hailed as like a genius. But with Mid Journey, you get these sorts of abstract uh, image artifacts a lot. And they are both the program's strength and its weakness. Because we get to see a lot of stuff like this. I mean, I have seen so many cyberpunk cities and cyberpunk faces and cyberpunk robots and cyberpunk yaramun kurmakolu that it's kind of gotten boring. So instead, I want to share you my personal uh, humble uh, way of using mid journey these are some more examples you can also instruct it to you know make it look like an old painting you know in the style of when you say create me like in the, a demon in the style of an old photograph this is not my work by the way these are some other users works 
you're not limited to an artist you know this artist said make me a game boy in the style of hr giger the immortal artist who designed the alien creature in the alien franchise and it really looks a bit like giger's work now this guy or gal said design me a demon in the style of a old photograph and it really looks like it, it really looks amazing like proper unbelievable like really scary and really beautiful work of art and of course now this really raises some ethical questions like are you allowed to uh, tell this program to create something in the shape of hr giger or in the in the style of cm kozaman and get away with it in fact i've seen some demos you know this thing where these art channels someone gets a like box of high quality watercolors and the first thing they do is lay out all the colors on a piece of paper so like vermilion orange cadmium red fatalha blue they lay them all out so some people are actually doing the same with mid journey just to get a feel of how the program interprets these styles so they say cube in the style of dali cube in the style of dega cube in the style of picasso cube in the style of impressionism cube in the style of giger cube in the style of old photographs you kind of get the idea so they kind of lay out how the program can em emulate all sorts of artists and styles and get a feel of how they can work from there up now this is a very nice and methodical way to work uh the way i'm going to show you how to do this is a little bit different I'm just going to show you my process with certain images. I'm going to show the end image first and then work my way back from how I got to it. So let's go. This was one of my favorite images. It's a kind of desert tango creature. Looks like a concept art right out of a sequel to Dune. But actually, it's a midi journey creation. What I did was... So, okay, I told the program to give me something like a Corvid Kuros in the Orientalist style. Corvids are the group of perching birds that contain crows, ravens, all their friends and relatives. They're great, great creatures. Smart as most people, actually. A kuros is this really eerie-looking kind of Greek statue. They, they, they have a very, they have a very well-defined set of uh, features, and they're as creepy a as f word, you know. And they're really beautiful. They're some of the oldest and most imposing works of art out there. And I also told him the program to do this in the Orientalist style. So Orientalism is this genre of art dealing with the Near East and its history. It gets a bad rap from time to time, but actually, you know, no such love has been shown by any civilization towards another time or any other civilization. And even though some of their output might be a little stereotypical, the people who did most the best orientalist painters actually poured like really years and years of research into these figures poses backgrounds so i don't think orientalism is as bad as they make it out to be and i could say this proudly because i live in the orient <laughs> so you can't criticize me okay that was a joke of course you can criticize me Okay, another thing becomes immediately obvious when using a mid journey is that this program's abilities now depend on your knowledge as an artist and your knowledge of art history. You know, I knew about Corvids and Kuros sculptures and Orientalist art before. They were all of them were among my favorite things. I got big books on Orientalist art actually, and I got a big book on Corvids too in my library. I like those things. So anyway, the program spat out these images these four images unbelievable isn't it like this looks like some ancient egyptian chud and this looks like some strange desert encounter this looks like a intelligent bird from a civilization in which birds were as adaptable as people and this was really neat because usually mid journey does these little abstract junk around these and some of these figures were really free of that junk and they were really just nice, neat things. So I choose this. Kubaluk! Enlarging. And it was the end result. Of course, what I did here, this was the end result. 
and I paint I did a lot of painting around it and on it you can see I I just added this flying buzzard I added this refined this desert scene from this hazy brown whatever this is uh, this was making things confusing and it was one of those annoying blobs so I removed it and made it like the peak peak of a cap and this thing kind of developed when the algorithm was refining the image they had more eyes and stuff here so I painted some of them out just so that it looks like kind of congruent once again uh, you really need to like touch it up after mid journey gives you a final image of course this is just my progression and I just really like this thing it looks like a human being but this kind of flow of the face it looks like a crow or a whale and I just call this a desert tango for the fun of it because why not tango by the way are these crow like spirits that are common in Japanese folklore you normally wouldn't see one in a desert because there are no deserts in Japan but here that's the appeal of it the desert tango in orientalist style I think the the sky's color came from oriental art if you go back orientalists really like these bright blue colors the these bright blue skies so it gave me and of course I did some adjustments with the le levels and contrast too so there's a lot of post-production work okay let's go another work the blip wow what the f god damn it's a scary demon with a flute okay so here we begin the ethically questionable part of using mid journey because i told it to make something in the style of one of my favorite artists in the style of wayne douglas barlow if you don't know who barlow is just google this name wayne barlow wayne douglas barlow he's an amazing artist he's like the great granddaddy of all speculative evolution artists myself included and i am but a humble uh, dust mite uh, when compared to barlow in terms of skill and his overall expertise of color so mr barlow paints these amazing scenes of demons in hell also he paints his uh, alien creatures like science fiction covers but his parents were naturalists like proper nature illustrators so he took their expertise and fused it with science fiction and fantasy and like uh, he's i believe like if the planet was threatened by a meteor he should be among the top 100 people to board the escape ship okay so i told the program to create me something in the style of wayne barlow this is why i am very hesitant about calling these mid-journey creations although they're as cool as hell look at this i mean it's unbelievable I still have these inner qualms about calling them my own work. You know, I, I still feel like, you know, at least I should let people know they are mid-journey creations. So I told them to, I told the program to create me a flutist deity, because why not? In the part of the world where I live, there is this, uh, there used to be this great cult in a goddess called, oh my god, I forgot her name. Kibele, yes, that's the name. Kibele is this gigantic mother goddess, extremely creepy mother goddess because usually she's shown accompanied by f figures or flutists. Now, if these are humans, then she must be seven meters tall or something. Or maybe these are not humans. Just look at this face. Okay. So, this always gave me the creeps. Even when, even uh, as a child, I went to a museum, saw this statue for real. I always thought Kibele was an alien and I always thought these flutists and these attendants that surrounded Kibele were even like scarier aliens. So I wanted to see what a flutist deity would look like. <coughs> okay, and the program gave me these four images in Wayne Barlow's imi inimitable style. I mean, even these, like even this one, for example, it's stupendous. There's something like a giant, giant sea, deep sea eel but with red color lying dead in the desert and a figure is blowing his trumpet triumphantly like almost looks like Marilyn Manson and the background is just beautiful but among these I chose this picture and I said program give me more varieties remember those sound effects from Blade Runner where Harrison Ford tells the photo machine to enhance 34 after 30 seconds I chose this image because I, I like like so I told him I told the program to generate me varieties of this thing 
because it looks more like the image of the death flutist. I mean, what the hell is this? Is he really playing a flute or are these his extended lower lips or is this some sort of proboscis? Anyway, so this one was the one that looked most like my childhood nightmare statue. So I told him to give me varieties and, you know, off each of these varieties was unbelievable. I almost chose this, you know, with the flutes growing out of his like inner arm bones. I think it was heavy metal as F. But then I chose this one because there was something about this. Like it's almost like his arms were also nailed to his body so that the only way he could position his arms were to play this flute proboscis. So I said, okay, enhance upper right hand corner. And this was the end result that Mid Journey gave me. Now, this was a great image. I mean, I was just, you know, just coming in my pants with excitement at this stage. But I still had many problems with this image. For example, Mid Journey, maybe on purpose, when it's generating human anatomy, it always surrounds it with these like little beads and shit. That is, it is like, what's going on here? These are kind of cool after you look at them for 10 seconds. And then you realize they're just junk. They're just artifacts of this program. So I spent nearly a day painting over these things. You know, if you look at this part, this is now more refined. I, Looking back, I should have painted over even these things. But, you know, I thought they were kind of cool. I refined this proboscis. I also gave him like these four eye-like things because, you know, you need a bit of symmetry. And there's something like a trachea here. You know, what else did I do? Hmm. I, I also gave this f false face here in its groin. Actually, my... Kind of guess was this was maybe such a terrible demonic entity that this was the real face and the body was just a fake body and the, the quote unquote face was just like a pump organ and the, what looked like these eyes are actually this <laughs> this kind of like anus like uh, prolapsed respiration organs and the whole purpose of the head was to pump the flute and play the goddesses demonic demonic music and here is my flutist deity in Wayne Barlow style once again I mean it's gonna be a really creepy future when in the future some cheap ass movie studio uses this program but they use a prompt containing some artist's name and they generate this the 35th next Star Wars villain or whatever and then you know who are you gonna credit you know, is there going to be like a, a bulk payment to Mid Journey Inc. up front if you're using this for concept design or and then or, or should you also pay in Wayne Barlow? Like if this was in the next Star Wars movie, I don't know, giving a sloppy toppy to Yoda or something, you know, would you pay Wayne Barlow? Would you pay me? Would you pay Mid Journey Incorporated? Or would you pay all three of us? Give me some of the money. Okay, next painting. Let's go! And of course, I wanted a, a goddess in the Wayne Barlow style too. And you know, once again, these images, I did not make any money from them. And neither should you if you use somebody else's name with them. So I, st I told the program to generate me a Phrygian goddess in Wayne Barlow style. And one of the cool things about Mid Journey is that the image develops in percentages. So... When your image is 10% ready, you get this image. It's really small. But I always, always, always screenshot these in development phases. Because I might use them later. Who knows? And, you know, they look really congruent. This looks like Cher, actually. Or the lady from Adam's family. This looks really creepy. This looks beautiful. Something like a moth. This looks eerie. Like a gray alien. But in the next step, when my development had reached like 50%, then the program started painting in with Wayne Barlow's colors, I guess. And now take a look. This amazingly beautiful woman became this like disgusting, vile. It looks like a like e evil voodoo racist caricature or something. This moth-like creature turned into this headless uh, flesh body. And this kind of goddess looks like a Middle Eastern goddess turned into a pink goddess. This was actually not so bad. So I was at a loss between this form and this. But I said, you know, this is too easy. I mean, it's going to be super cool, but let's let's change things up a bit. So I choose this one. I also like this kind of clothes that this figure had. It looks like a theropod dinosaur or a, like some sort of 
insect creature, which which is really cool on a goddess. I had problems with the face though, so I said, look, oh, it advanced even more. So at 90%, it turned into a kind of monkey-like face, but I was still going with this. I mean, these two were great forms, but for some reason I didn't want to choose them, but all of them would have rendered beautifully. And this was just horrible. I mean, it, it had like this cheap horror movie art. I don't know. Some of these, like in Turkey, we have these jinn movies. Sit jinn, it jinn, zet jinn. Or like every year a scary jinn movie comes out with a creepy but cheap face on a poster. And you're supposed to be scared of them. This looks like them. So I passed them. I said, enhance me, lower left hand picture. And it got me, oh my God, what's this? And this ha this face was horrible, horrible. I couldn't use this picture. And the beautiful dinosaur claws, for some reason it eradicated them and turned its hands into clay. I dreamt that I had feet of clay. I dreamt of centuries laid bare. If you can identify where these lyrics came from, I'll give you a special gift. Okay, so I had a real problem in my hands. What the hell am I gonna do with this shit? Okay, so it's time to go to Photoshop mode. So I said, look, let's give this a face. Actually, let's ask the program to generate me a face. Give me a face of. So I said, you know, I, I'm really a big fan of these amazing ritual masks in the beautiful and still comparatively unspoiled Mediterranean islands of Sardinia. They have these amazing rituals probably dating back to the Bronze Age where they, they wear these strange masks and hold these uh, Pagan-like ceremonies. It's unbelievable. Like Sardinian, Sardinian masks. Go Google them. So I said, and also I was also being getting a little ashamed of using Mr. Barlow's prompt for everything. So I said, give me Sardinian, Sardinian masks in painterly style. And then the program said, die will be done, my master. And it was super effective. I mean, what are these? Like... This is super good. These are like fish gladiators or whatever. And this is just unbelievable. Unbelievable. So I chose the lower left hand corner again. Because remember, we're trying to find a face for this abomination here. So I chose this. Upgraded. And then I took my magical Photoshop skills and pasted it here. And my work was quote unquote complete. And just for fun, I painted in some stars into his hair, into her hair, because this was like a spirit goddess. And, you know, if you looked into her dead bone dry eyes, you would maybe get transported into another realm or whatever. If I was doing this picture today, I would still paint over the breasts, like make them equal size and also maybe paint those amazing clothes back in. I don't know. But once again, I had used the name of a great artist. So, you know feel bad calling this my own it's a group of effort and that's why we move into the next picture i mean i was kind of sick of generating all these demons flesh cyberpunk demons cyberpunk monster demon with a micro bully and shit so i wanted something cute and charming and just beautiful so i told the program to give me a winged apparition winged apparition in henry russo style henry russo actually my wife introduced me to this artist. He's a great uh, Parisian painter. He did not have a formal art education, but he had the drive, you know. He had the will, eh, I could still make it. And he like painted every leaf separately. And he had a like very strange, innate si sense of composition. And that's why his work is like beautiful now to look back at. Back in his day, he influenced people like Picasso and Dali. And the best thing about Henri Rousseau was he was not educated as an artist. I think this is like the best way to be an artist is not to be educated as one. I kid you not. So I told the program to make me a winged apparition, a, a Marian apparitions, of course, uh, apparitions of Virgin Mary. They're a big deal in many Catholic countries. They're also a big deal in Egypt. There's something called a Zaytun apparition. This kind of ghost appeared in the dome of a church. It's just scary. So let's see what Mid Journey gave me. And of course, I began screenshotting as soon as it started giving me this 10% lesser developed uh, results. And these 
you will see would come in very handy i screenshotted these blip, 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 then it, as we reached like 50 percent it became more obvious like this thing like a chain like a teacher lady kind of became this beautifully colored insect kind of thing this i don't know what this red figure is but it became kind of like a butterfly soldier of christ kind type of apparition and this beautiful bird i thought this had the best chances in the beginning turned into some like teletubbies kind of looney tunes meets teletubbies kind of unusable abstract thing so i chose the lady with the beautiful wing patterns because i really like these colors and i really like these colors and remember my amb my aim here was to do something charming you know i i was sick of these demons enhance oh my god what you doing what's this face i guess the algorithm because it's like really dumb it may, may have like used portraits of people named henry and the body is not body is beautiful the, the background trees are amazing but what the hell is this face the problem has a the, this program has a problem with faces and maybe the creators did it on purpose because you know they don't want people getting perfect results so uh, what i did was i went back to my old results you remember this thing the butterfly soldier of christ i actually copied it here and I took one of the lesser developed angel pictures and you see I used them as elements to like paint over. I actually like pasted this right over and painted over it in Photoshop. I like this kind of, remember this thing had this kind of streaks of paint here which I found very beautiful and human. So I replicated in the other side and then the little angels, there are these like ugly white things here. I used them to cover it up so it looks like a mother of smaller angels a mother angel of smaller angel birds and these trees i was just in love with them and just look at this yellow unbelievably painterly beautiful and what about this background texture it's just velvety you know unbelievable remember this is 100 percent digital it doesn't look like the corrupt flesh texture that we saw in the earlier works also it's a kind of texture you can't easily do with photoshop alone and if I had paint, if I had shown this to people before uh, Mid Journey became a thing, they would ask, "Cool work, bro! What brushes did you use?" Well, I used the brush of my right middle finger. Take that. Okay, let's go. Another work. So now I had gotten into the mindset of composition, compositing. You know, remember I, I put these angels from another picture, and so I said, "No, let's give this actually." Let's give this more than one hour of work. Let's spend an entire day trying to create a mid-journey painting. Okay, that was my personal mission for that day. And this was the result. It's the story of Mo Mothman told in ledger painting style. If you don't know what ledger painting is, okay. So I said Mod Prophet in Mod Prophet in ledger art style. So the American Indians, uh, when uh, white people were uh, g-wording them you know genociding them fought a lot of minor battles and skirmishes and some of them actually documented uh, their life and their struggles among themselves and against the white people in these really beautiful ledger drawings so what happened was you know paper and ledger notebooks they were the only only source of paper available in those times so the indian artists just ripped them out and use them to paint these amazing battle scenes and these like scenes of like this is about how a warrior in the heat of elated battle saw himself transformed into a thunder being and his to horse was also transformed into a thunder being horse unbelievable kind of transcendental vision and they're like uh, really beautiful of course you can't find a better contrast of the systematically developed western civilization that came to occupy north america and the people they destroyed this is like so beautiful because the ledger says accounts payable to mr bezos and then the indian people just ripped it out and said no i was a thunder being how beautiful and you know 
in the long run can't really tell which one is the more advanced civilization to be honest okay so i said give me a mod prophet in ledger art style you know so it gave me these amazing results amazing results unbelievable results so i have lots of them like this one like this alone could be a finished work this alone could be a finished work look at this face here unbelievable the art this algorithm really works the best when you tell it to generate something abstract you know so not forget the cyberpunk realistic 4k shit just tell it to do something like primitive art cave paintings then you get the best results so i chose one of them which was this one so i went to work on it so i wanted a story you know the moth man is an american cryptid it's like this creature with big eyes it flies around terrorizes people there's a really great movie about it too it's called the mothman chronicles and it's just part of american folklore at this point and you know there's hints that it might be a trans-dimensional creature so i wanted to tell that story of an angel like butterfly like being descending from the stars so what i did was i went back to mid journey dozens and dozens of times i said give me some scared people in ledger art style give me a hero in ledger art style give me people in ledger art style give me stars in ledger art style give me ufo in ledger art style I, I i got them all these elements and composited them together into this final result and if you go back chuk, chuk, i also painted in an extended border i painted well i painted whoop, well what's wrong with the zoom aspect here huh okay huh okay so i painted i painted out some of i painted it another eye like this part was so bright it distracted the viewer so i made it darker and made some adjustments now here we had some dirty shit i just edited them out and i actually gave the feet some clothes and i, I painted a high halo on the hero's head you know i didn't want it to look completely like a american indian painting because you know heck, these people have their respectable tradition to do so i didn't want to emulate this look exactly but I wanted it to like evoke a similar sentiment, which is to say, North America is a land of monsters. Okay, so let's go. Another painting. Let's go. So after this point, my mind, I was open. I said, you know, I'm a painter already. I mean, if you go back, 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 back. Oh, I wonder if we should go back this far. I paint prehistoric animals already. I got a, I have got the talent of a painter. So why am I letting Mid Journey obscure that talent? You know, I I already I am able to paint fantastic creatures. So let's work this program in a way that Mid Journey helps me, and so it doesn't become an expository one of freak show. If you get my gist, so I told Mid Journey, okay, we we are getting there. I made this with Mid Journey. It's a work of paleo art. If you don't know what paleo art is, it's realistic depictions of animals, a real life animals that lived in the Earth's past, but are now sadly extinct. So this depicts a male and female Ophiacodon. These are early, early reptiles that somehow were close to the ancestors of mammals. Long story, but long story short, things like this really existed. The name is Ophiacodon. That's O P H I A C O D O N Ophiacodon. Okay. And then they're in this kind of impressionistic carboniferous forest. Unbelievable. There's a giant dragonfly flying about. There's some plants. And there's all these like painterly flourishes of color. So I painted only this figure in, this figure in, some of this figure in, and some of these plants. Everything else was mid-journey made. I told him to give me a carboniferous forest at impressionism style with an aspect ratio of 16 to 9, which is like the uh, standard wide-angle movie screen size. So it gave me these results. I chose this one, enhanced it, enhanced it, enhanced it, and then painted the creatures over it. In fact, a lot of things like these were hand-painted. This was actually another entire image development adventure i told him to generate me a dragonfly in impre impressionistic style and i edited it a bit and pasted it in there 
it's just really fun fun and beautiful work of paleo art and now this i believe is the way to go forward with mid journey like use it as a painter's assistant you know i don't know it's a big debate but try not to use any other artists names so yeah just out of respect use it for inspiration and use it to make collages in fact i use a similar techniques all over again and made this amazing painting of these grazing plant-eating dinosaurs this is a species known as omeisaurus that's o m e i s a u r u s and it like was one of the weirdestly proportioned of all plant eating sauropods it wasn't too big but the trees make it look really majestic so in here i once again told told the program to make me some uh, araucaria trees which are these prehistoric looking relatives of pine trees in impressionistic style i made a lot of trees i told the program to make me a landscape and then pasted the trees over the landscape i there was lots of junk here i cleaned out i painted these birds in separately and then i painted the creatures in separately and it, this was the result what a nice painting and like to do something like this would have taken me months now it took me two days still it's worth the effort so here are some lessons from this lesson uh, course advanced tutorial in mid journey one always save developing images you see how they could prove useful later like if if nothing you'll use them to chart your progress always make compositions you know i mean it's just easy otherwise and, and you know of course sometimes the program spits out something that's so fantastic you just want to go with it and maybe okay you can do an exception but you know put some elbow grease into this shit come on and also try to see your mid-journey creations as assets and not finished works this is very important and you know it was a game changer for me when i had that realization i was able to make all these beautiful dinosaur works and it's just phew, something to keep mind keep in mind and then read up on art history now I wouldn't have been able to do any of these paintings if I didn't know what the ledger painting was, if I didn't know what orientalist art was, if I didn't know what a kuros was, if I did not know what omeisaurus was, if I did not know what carboniferous plants looks like. Now this program is going to put a lot of surreal artists out of a out of job, but you know what? It's also going to make the introverted studying nerds even more powerful because now you, the, what you know is really going to make a difference in your creations. And of course, a skill in painting still helps. Even if you don't edit these creations later on, you know, the way you understand how light shadows work, how colors work, for example, because I've been painting, I could tell the beauty in here. Because in painting, there's a rule. If something is distant, it appears pale and bluish and blurry. So I could appreciate that and composite my images that way. So, and these two last lessons, you know, they should be shouted from the mountaintops like a goddamn prophet. Read up on art history and a skill in painting still helps. All right, this was your lesson, everyone. Now go home, have fun with Mid Journey. I hope I could uh, be useful to you. Now, this was just my way of doing things. Of course, if you have your own way of using Midjourney, please share in the comments. And you know, if you appreciate the time I take to make these creations, and if you want to see some surprise paintings I don't show anywhere else, please follow me on Patreon. That CM Kozeman. Okay, this was it. Ew, ew, ew. I'm now gonna use some mind techniques, mind brainwashing techniques to flash this image before your eyes. Ew. Maybe you'll give more than a dollar yeah heck anyways thanks for watching and have a nice day goodbye